about now, I'm Jay. C-Dub on the beat. Back against the wall, CL20's knocking ready. IGI's tripping, validated, shoot ready. Brown incarceration, got my people living daily. Gang wars, back to back. Hey, yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day. Feeling blessing, like I always say. It's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. And it's a trip, right? You know, I waited. You know, just because I see a trending topic doesn't mean I'm going to jump right on it that very second. You know, I got other things I got to do real quick. So, you know, I did see about, you know, Fade 300 from 559 from the Fresno, which 559 ain't even going to be 559 no more. They're changing the area code and I got it tattooed on my neck. So I might as well cover that up. But yeah, I mean, I seen that, you know, Fade 300 is going to be on there. Uh, WAC 100 talked about it. Adam 22 talked about it. I seen other podcasters talk about it. And here's my perspective on it. This should be a good one because, you know, I was busted in YA when I, with Bulldogs. But see, I'm from the 559. So I've got into fights with Bulldogs on the streets, in group homes, in the juvie systems. But, you know, I was locked up with a lot of Bulldogs from, from Fresno and, the, and YA. You know, I fought a lot of Bulldogs only on the basis because, you know, even though I was in YA with Bulldog, Bulldogs and Southsiders... You know, I always thought my hatred had to be for Southsiders for specific reasons. You know, nobody in my life taught me how to hate Bulldogs and why to hate Bulldogs other than they were arch enemies. So when I got to YA, Norteños from up north, mostly San Jose for some reason, always encouraged me to rush Bulldogs the moment they walked in. If there were a new Bulldog showing up in Calaveras or in uh, when I went to Preston, if they were showing up in Hawthorne and uh, what was the other, Greenbrier I think it was or something like that. I'd had to rush them because you had to set the tone for these Bulldogs that they, they weren't welcome. They're not allowed. They can't program with us. They're not respected. Homeboys gave Southerners their respect because Southerners were always deep on the YA yards. But when it came to Bulldogs, Bulldogs were not that deep. So we had to put hands on them. Most of the time, them fools had beaters, bro. I haven't told you the story about Bones when Bones whooped me and when Bones had me talking to myself while he whooped me. That's crazy. When you could talk to yourself about it, like, ooh, you know what I mean? But anyways, so Fate 300 gets put on uh, the podcast and immediately same narrative I hear. Uh, Adam 22 is at it again. Adam 22 is instigating. Bro, I mean, he's going to get the hottest trending topic rap artist to come on that show. Why not? Everybody deserves recognition. And to be honest with you, I got a lot of homies that are in my Instagram that are bulldogs that I have general conversations with, you know, give me a, you know, case laws to talk about, about their neighborhoods. I've yet to do them, but I'm going to do them. But honestly, I think Bulldogs deserve their recognition because I think what they stand on and what they stand for and what they've done in history, you know, is underrated. It goes under the radar. Because somebody had asked me, hey, bro, do you think Thongo Blast can be created in California? And I was like, no, not at all. Uh, These organizations won't allow it. SNYs, you know, you have room. If If you're a powerful leader... A leader is your own person and you can create your own gang, then the only resistance you'll ever receive from anybody is probably going to be with the two fivers. But once you go to war with them and knock a couple of them down, then you'll be all right, bro. You can start your own gang. It's really simple. It's not that hard to start your own gang in this. It's just a lot of them start, get into some funk and realize like, bro, I don't want to get stabbed up by these dudes that are already pre-established. I'm good. But Bulldogs are underrated because of the history. Reminds you, they have... 50-50 50-50 yards, and they have yards where those yards are not even designated at SNY. It's just these prison organizations identify them as SNYs and PCs and dropouts. But in reality, no. Bulldogs have their own yards. Now, a lot of Bulldogs transition over and go SNY and still claim Bulldog because they don't have a guideline. They don't have a script to follow. They just are who they are. And since the creation of Bulldogs and what they stand on and how they resisted the NF and broke off and created their own thing, I mean, these SNY groups did that in a sense, but not to that level of expectation and respect that Bulldogs had because in reality, North and South say the same thing. Man, Bulldogs ain't out there. They ain't doing nothing. They only got Fresno. That's all. Dude, that's all they want is Fresno. They don't want nothing else. They don't want Southern California. They don't want Northern California. They can give a damn about either side. They took what they wanted, and that was the city of Fresno and Fresno County. 
Yeah, you got Northerners and Southerners in Fresno and in Fresno County, but Bulldogs give West Fresno Norte the blues. A300 goes on this show, and he's, he's the representative of Fresno right now as Fresno rappers because of who he's collabed with, the consistency of his music that he's dropped, and the elevation in his own style. I mean, he's, he's, I've seen him a lot with Livewire, you know, Jay Stylin and all them. He raps with them a lot. But mind you, there's a lot of Bulldog rappers that got the numbers, that got the views, that got flow, that got consistently. It's just like anybody else, they're from Fresno. They represent the Bulldog patch. They represent Fresno County as Bulldog Nation. Nobody in Northern California and Southern California is going to respect that because it's not very popular. It's just a perception that, you know, these the mass audience have that all, oh, bro. If you ain't from the North, you ain't from the South. Because, you know, it's crazy. Southerners will show Northern California rappers their respects. Give them their flowers. Cholo Juan and Swifty Blue said Norteños are better rappers than Sureños. And I kind of, you know what I mean? I kind of agree, but I kind of don't, too. Because I, I can point out some Southern rappers that got gas, bro. They got bars. But... You know, people north and south are gonna give each other flowers. There's a lot of Sureños that say they they they've always listened to Woody's music, and there's a lot of Norteño rappers that they'll give their flowers to Southern rappers. But when it comes to Bulldogs, oh bro, I don't even want to hear it. I don't want to listen to it. I'm not even gonna acknowledge it. Oh, he got a paw print. M miss me with all that. I've been listening to Fate 300 since I got out of jail. Tried to collab with them, didn't work out. So be it. But it's like this region of Fresno is very isolated. Not because they want to stick to themselves and they want to mess with themselves and their own people and their own kind. But a lot of talent comes out of Fresno that people don't know about. Elijah is one of them. I listen to Elijah a lot. Follow him on Instagram. He follows me on Instagram. He, he signed with Jay, uh, Jay Stylin. He's from Fresno. Fresno doesn't get the spotlight it deserves. Plain and simple. To be honest with you. When I seen Adam22 bring Faith 300 up on the podcast... I give respects for respects, dude. A little kid got bars. Yeah, people like to make fun of him, call him an Edgar, call him this, call him that. There's actually video footage of this dude online where he squabbles, where he's fighting his enemies in the streets one-on-one. -on -one. He ain't pulling out pistols. He's taking his fades. He's catching his lickings. He's putting in work on the streets. And if you watch this channel right here, you'll see a lot of Bulldogs fights. A lot of Bulldogs record themselves all day going to their rival neighborhoods and not going with guns. They're just like, let's go, man. My my dogs versus your dogs. It'd be like a five on five. We'd be three on three, one on ones. They they pride themselves on those backyard brawls and squabbing with one another. But when it comes down to it, with Northerners and Southerners, yeah, the gunplay is real. They go at it with each other. They catch cases like anybody else. And they're big in the system, but they're isolated in the system. But they pose an immediate threat to the north and south. If a bulldog, a group of bulldogs, show up on the yard, the Southerners immediately rush them. They don't want them on the yard. They don't want to program with on the yard. Same thing for Northerners. Northerners vow to never program with Bulldogs ever again. Why? Because they branched off and broke away and decided to say, you know what, we ain't taking orders from none of your big homies and we ain't paying taxes to none of your big homies. If you get rid of the titles, Norteño, Sureño, and Bulldogs, and just look at what they did, when they finally just said, you know what, we're cool on answering to somebody. We're going to be our own entity. They created something, even though they're isolated in Fresno. You guys haven't got rid of them. But the whole peace treaty now is the focus on SNYs. We need to get rid of these SNYs. Yeah, you'll get rid of SNYs because the majority of SNYs come home and don't want to gunplay, don't want to gangbang, don't want to be targeted, want to live the family life. Stop gangbanging for a reason. Went to SNY for a reason, but you'll target them if they're still living in your guys' cities or in your guys' neighborhoods. They're an immediate threat. But Bulldogs are as dead center in the middle. But you don't see Northerners and Southerners going to this immediate area and saying, you know what, let's get rid of Bulldogs too because they pose an immediate threat. I think the North and South really have an idea that you bring that fight with these Bulldogs, they're going to fight back. Most SNYs on the streets ain't going to fight back. They're going to run. They're going to hide. They're going to they're gonna jump ship. They're going to protect themselves. Some are out there infiltrating, acting like they're active, portraying that they're active. So be it. But why are you scared to program with the Bulldogs? Why are you scared to let the Bulldogs walk the yards? Why are you scared to let the Bulldogs establish themselves? So for me to see Fate 300 establish room for opportunity, not only for himself and his music career, but for Bulldogs, people look at it like, oh, man, Adam's instigating because he brought a Bulldog. Man, Adam's going to do what Adam's going to do. Northerners had their chance. Southerners always been had their chance. Southerners were hating on the fact that 
they wanted it to themselves. They wanted no jumper for themselves because it's based in LA. Then Norteño started coming in, and now Norteños are in Los Angeles doing music videos and shopping. And I don't think they're establishing hoods. I don't think that'll never happen. But now Bulldogs got their opportunity. I mean, I get it. You can read between the lines and see that it's a deadly game. It's a dangerous game inviting Bulldogs and Northerners of Southern California. Somebody's going to just be real jealous and hateful and spiteful and show up. Because I'm pretty sure all these famous people that have been on No Jumper are going to leak that location to somebody. It's a good thing that Adam doesn't really broadcast the moment that it happens. Only broadcasts after it's been happening. These guys were able to leave the location. Because I could see somebody getting hurt only because out of jealousy and spite and resentment what Adam's doing. And that's just the, the haterism in this world nowadays. They don't want to see nobody win but themselves. That's what haterism really is. But there's nothing wrong with Bulldogs getting their time. Because like I said, society, social media, they lack respect for Bulldogs, bro, because they can't stand what Bulldogs stand for. That's the God honest truth. Trust me, I used to, I was a, I'm an ex-Northerner. I didn't like what Bulldogs stood for because I had to read Norteño propaganda my whole life calling these dudes degenerates and bonitos and deserters. And they betrayed us. They left us. They thought they were better than us. Some of the... Some of these uh, Fresno Bulldog founders were ex-NF members, so they're, that's frowned upon. That's that's the cardinal sin to violate. Bro, Bulldogs are Bulldogs. They did what they did, just like Thongo Blast did what they did in Texas. Everybody respects Thongo Blast all over social media, respects him in the streets. Bro, you can't go into Fresno City and disrespect the Bulldog and think you got nothing coming. i seen video footage of Bulldogs stripping Norteños of their red belts in the Fashion Fair Mall. Seen it with my own eyes. But think about it. They created themselves just to be themselves and represent who they are. So what if they have internal conversations they beef with each other? Who doesn't? Southerners beef with Southerners. Northerners beef with Northerners. But at the end of the day, bro, they stick to themselves. They don't want nothing to do with nobody. And they're not going to answer to nobody. And they're their own kind. They're their own breed of animals. And people don't respect that because... And people don't respect that in the same sense, like, people don't respect my music. They listen to my channel, they tune into my channel, they hear the gossip, they hear the cheese made, they hear the crazy stories, they love the positive message. But when it comes to my music, Chalice, bro, you're a dropout. Just like Rowdy Rack said, he'll do music with anybody but an SNY dropout. He can't do that. I was about to go in on that video, but I chose not to. I chose to remain positive. They guys don't get their, these guys don't get their flowers and their recognition and their spotlight because... Of who they are and what they represented and what they stood for in history. Now get over it. Nobody was part of this history. So I've seen it all over social media. The hate and criticism that Faith 300 received because he got an opportunity on No Jumper. Like everybody finds a reason to hate and think it's a legitimate reason to hate. on Whether it's a bulldog or a bulldog rapper or somebody from Fresno. When all actuality, people that hate the most on the internet haven't been to prison only know about prison politics through word of mouth through what their neighborhood speaks about the rumors the false statements the false allegations the propaganda period if you ain't never been to war with a bulldog you ain't got no reason to hate a bulldog and even then that's not even a legitimate reason anymore to really hate and hate on a bulldog per se because that's something that happened in 1985 plain and simple they are who they are, and they're going to get opportunities and create opportunities for themselves like anybody else on social media. And I find it funny that people don't want to be hated on, but they're quick to hate on somebody else. See, Faith 300 is just a kid. He's a young kid that's an aspiring rapper that got the views, that got the recognition. I've seen him on Daily Slaps. He always posts his music on Rap City and Daily Slaps and uh, a couple other platforms. But, you know, when you can't utilize platforms like this, they're because, you know, Northeños felt like they took it over. And you got to be from Northern California, really, to have your music really streamed on there. Because look at what Lefty did when he went on Thizzler. They, they hated him. They, they really tried to get that dude not to diss while everybody else diss him. You know, it's rigged. The industry is rigged. And it's favored. And it's utilized by gang members to promote themselves, but quick to hate on the next man when they're trying to be up-and-coming rappers. So I do look forward to hear what Faith 300 has to say and how he represents, you know, Fresno 559. They deserve it just like anybody else. I just find it funny that when you create an opportunity for yourself to, to make it in life, even for people that don't know who you are, never seen you a day in your life, never even smelt your breath, utilize social media to hate. Like anybody that hates can't explain a legitimate reason on social media why Fresno Bulldogs don't deserve recognition, why Norteños didn't deserve the recognition and the opportunity to go to No Jumper. Like, stop glorifying No Jumper as 
the podcast that's gonna that's gonna help you break through the industry and get you worldwide famous and popularity. It's just a start. It's just the beginning, like I explained many times before. But like I said, people that hate Fresno Bulldogs the most have no idea what a Bulldog really is, what they stand for, have never been to war, never been on a yard with them. They just hate them because everybody tells them they hate them. And that's crazy how society really works, that nobody really thinks for themselves. So, you know, like I said, I give flowers when flowers do. So I look forward to the podcast. So with that being said, like I always say, is one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Peace.